Hi y'all, welcome back to the channel. Well, we're back at the horse trailer that we're renovating and today's video is going to be moving into the process of changing out the old lead acid batteries for lithium iron phosphate on the 12 volt system, okay? So these things came with two lead acid deep cycle batteries that were rated at 80 amp hours a piece and you can use them for about 50% of their capacity. So I had a, com a total capacity of about 80 amp hours. And every three years or so, they had to get swapped out because they lost their capacity and, and went kaput. So I decided to, this is, this is part of a series. I'm gonna, I'm changing over this whole system to be able to run on lithium iron phosphate cells. We're gonna put a big 48 volt battery. If you watch my channel, you know I do a lot of that, build a lot of 48 volt batteries. And we're gonna put that in with an inverter, solar panels, the whole thing. But the first process that we're gonna do is we're gonna change the 12 volt battery that would normally reside right here, two 12 volt batteries in a big box. And we're gonna put one battery in it's gonna have four times as much capacity. Under here, you've got the, the pipes that hold the, the wastewater drain hoses, the spare tire, the hydraulic jack that lifts the front end of the gooseneck up off the truck, two propane tanks, and then there was this big box that held two lead acid batteries and now holds tools. Because what I did was I moved the 12 volt battery inside. That gave me a couple of advantages. Let's see if I can show you how I did that. Because all of those 12 volt cables were connected inside that box. And now I have them all up above the box. I've joined them all in a lug and it's all wrapped with multiple layers of heat shrink tubing. And then you can see in the center there a conduit and a new set of cables running up into the living quarters. Now let me show you where I ran that. We'll go for a little we'll go for a little walk. Now would be a really good time for you to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed and you want to see the rest in this series, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. So inside the living quarters, we were down under here, and now straight up above that is this little cabinet, and there's that conduit, and here's the battery that I built. Now this is a DIY battery built by Eel Battery Company. and. There's a couple of companies that make these, but the company, I think Eel Battery is a good company. And one of the companies that's real popular with these and makes a, one of these battery kits that has a plastic case, um, has business practices that I would recommend shying away from. This battery has a steel case I'm not affiliated with this company. I paid $220 to have this kit shipped to my door. It includes a JKBMS, which you can monitor with Bluetooth. One of the things I don't really prefer about it is that, well, the thing that I don't really prefer about it is it comes in a big steel case. And while that is very strong, it blocks the signal of the Bluetooth and it makes the battery itself very heavy with the cells and the BMS and that big steel case, and there's multiple layers of steel in there because they restrain the battery, um, it weighed 68 pounds when I got done. Uh, the kit itself, $220, I think that's reasonable for what you're getting. And the cells I buy from my friend Jenny Wu, uh, the cost of those cells and the quality of those cells is the cost has gone down the quality's gone up 
those cells now are testing above 330 amp hours and that makes for a very powerful battery and the uh, let me close this light behind you and the uh, cells even if you order them from the Houston warehouse or one of the European warehouses they're under $90 a piece so that makes a very reasonably priced battery uh, for a battery of this capacity and capability and I don't believe I'll ever have to replace it I think it'll be good for the life of Ray um, there's a couple of things when you're putting it together you need to know the bus bars are very good and they do what I do they tap into the bus bars a threaded hole to put the sensing wires on that the BMS uses to sense the voltage of each of the cells it they tap them into a separate hole I do not like to use ring terminals on top of the bus bars to put the sensing wires on I want the threaded nut the serrated nuts that tighten down onto the bus bar I want those serrations to tight direct, tighten directly into the bus bars so that they won't back off later. And if you tighten those serrated nuts down onto a sensing terminal, a ring terminal, then there can be slippage between the ring terminal and the bus bar. The serrated nut loses its uh, advantage. So this is good. What you need to think about, though, if you get these really good cells, they're, they're very flat. And when I tightened this uh, kit up all the way, the cells still had a little looseness between them. And I don't want movement between my cells because I don't want the uh, bus bars to be what manage the relationship between the two cells. I want them to be snug and then tighten up the bus bars. So what I did was I used some of the, when I build these 48 volt batteries that you see in some of my other videos, I use these very thin cutting board sheets. There are other things that you can get, sh sheets of thin plastic. And I used four or five pieces of that, and it was enough to take up the, the gap bet between the batteries. And uh, just four or five total sheets, and I was able to get those cells snugged up to one another so that I didn't have to worry about a little movement uh, inside the battery if the battery gets jostled around. So. Uh, that's all you need to know to build the kit. Um, now, you do have to make modifications to the trailer itself. If you have a new trailer, you probably have what you need in place, but you might have to flip a switch. Let me show you what I mean. RVs, travel trailers, camper vans, often or usually have a power distribution panel with a power converter and many or most perhaps of them come from progressive dynamics. You have three sections. You have the 120 volt breaker section for dis distributing 120 volts. You have all these fuses that are for 12 volts and those will be for individual lighting circuits and control circuit for the refrigerator and the water pump, things like that. And then behind these vents, you have a power converter, which converts 120 volts AC to 12 volts DC to charge that battery. But when this trailer was built 12 years ago, they only had lead acid batteries. So I had to change this converter out I ordered it from Progressive Dynamics for $180, and the difference isn't much. It looks this pretty much the same. You, you'll see it's laid out a little different, but the big difference is this switch right here. You see where it says LI and LA? That switch switches from lead acid to lithium ion. If you do not have that, then the voltage that the, that this unit will supply to the battery isn't enough to fully charge lithium ion. So it's an easy swap out. And 
a few wires and a few screws and you're done. If your RV is a newer RV, you may already have that switch, but you need to make sure and go ahead and switch to lithium ion from lead acid when you're making this modification. Now, these breakers, one's going to be for the microwave and one's going to be for the refrigerator and there's going to be one for GFI plugs and for s plugs s around the unit and then this last one on this unit is for the power converter. Now if you look at this power converter you'll see it's got a big heat sink and a cooling fan and that screams waste heat to me. That tells me that when this unit is working it's creating some waste heat and that's not great. I have so much capacity on this battery now that I can run my normal loads in here that are 12 volts for four, five, six days. If you are going to plug something in that uses 12 volts that's an abnormally high uh, wattage draw, then you might have to charge that battery more than every five or six days. But because I don't, and I can monitor the the, the voltage of that battery, well, after four days or so, if it gets down into the 3.1 volt per cell range, then I know I'm getting close to empty, and I'll flip that switch on. Or any time that I'm someplace where I'm plugged into shore power, or if I have the generator running for some reason, I might go ahead and flip that on and go ahead and top that 12 volt battery off. But the rest of the time, that breaker can be turned off and I'm not having to worry about that fan running and producing a little waste heat and, and whatever. Now, there are many people I've seen who, when they put a 48 volt lithium iron battery into their RV, which the next video will be about that, uh, they just used a, they got rid of that power converter and they used a 12 volt transformer. And that's fine, that would be more efficient, but the problem with that is you can't just get a 12 volt transformer, you have to get a charge controller for that battery. And the problem with that is if your 48 volt system goes down, you can now be plugged into 120 volt shore power and still not have 12 volt power for your 12 volt systems. I would like to keep my options open and I'll flip that breaker when I need to. The uh, I think I've told you everything that you need to know to make this transition for yourself. And the next video I'm going to make is going to be about the 48 volt battery installation and the, the uh, I'm going to then make one about installing the all-in-one inverter. And then we'll show you how we put solar panels up on the roof. That's all for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you'll subscribe and I look forward to your comments. Thank you.